Hey there, Garrett here with DIY PBX. Welcome back. This is video 7. In the next couple of moments, Kent is going to show you how to set up call cues on your DIY PBX. Kent, show us how it's done. Kent from DIYPBX.com again. This video we're going to talk about cues, and many of you may know cues because you've sat in them for perhaps many hours of your life uh, without even realizing it. After you've pressed one and then option two and then option five and gotten through ten phone trees, you finally wound up in a queue where you sat on hold waiting for an agent to pick up or a customer service rep to pick up. A lot of that is done from asterisk or free PBX which is based on asterisk um, and it's just done in this queue menu here so we're gonna go ahead and add a queue we'll call this queue number uh, 777 it's the lucky queue matter of fact we'll even just call it lucky queue and we could put in a queue password which would be how the agents log into this queue uh, if we wanted to password protect it so that the agents, the representatives on our end, had to put in a password to sit in this queue. Uh, do we want to confirm the call? You can go through all these different options. Just remember, if you hover over the little question mark, blue question mark bubble, you will be able to see what, um, what the option does. Now, here's where we come to a choice static agents or dynamic members dynamic members mean that the extension has to dial in to the queue and then they would if we put in a password they would put in their password and if they're a member let's say we had 100 in here 100 would have to dial in to the queue to become a member of the queue uh, in this case i'm just going to use a static one so these phones will always be members of the queue of this queue that we're creating uh, they don't have to dial in they're just always automatically a member you got your options here with your strategies again with a queue if you've got a lot of them what i might recommend uh, is a different one maybe linear uh, or least recent read up on those and see what they do um, this autofill option is important uh, if you don't do autofill and you got it'll basically send one call at a time and wait for that to get picked up whereas this one if you've got 30 extensions it'll try and fill all 30 extensions with however many calls that way people aren't just waiting in the queue needlessly uh, do we want it to skip busy agents uh, yeah I mean if they're busy there's no need to ring them and you've got all these different options you can go through how long do we want them to wait inside well we could leave it unlimited or we could say you know after a certain amount of time it, it goes somewhere else uh, how often do we want to retry you have all these different options here uh, there's it's very flexible with how you want to structure it the most important one is the the max wait time you can leave it as unlimited probably don't want to do that or they could just sit on hold forever uh, and that's not great for anyone involved and then the agent timeout is you know how long are we going to ring them before we assume you know that they're unavailable uh, that agent that individual extension is unavailable the capacity option if you leave it at zero it's unlimited how many people can get inside that queue uh, do we want to join it if the queue is empty I probably set this to no that means if there's no agents um, then nobody can join that queue which is what we want we don't want anybody to fall into that queue if they can't for some reason there's nobody to pick up obviously that's pretty pointless um, we could offer them a different breakout menu uh, different options here some of this is very complex we're just creating a very basic queue right now uh, you could set certain events to happen with somebody is when somebody is called uh, if for some reason the queue were to fail we'd like to send them somewhere we'll send them to the voicemail that we created before and that's really it uh, you create your queue assign your agents and set your ring strategy make sure you have all your options the way you want and the neat thing is that you can go in and, and play with this as much as you want to get the options right. You can experience it immediately just like you were a customer. And what I want to show you is that we've got the inbound route. It's still going to our IVR. What's a very common method, though, is that from our IVR, 
uh, we actually, you know, option zero, we could now send that to our queue. And option one would go to the phone. That way, maybe you have a recording that says, uh, if you'd like to speak to a representative, please, please press zero, and it goes to our queue. And it rings all of our phones in there. That's really it for creating a queue. Remember, it's your system, uh, and you can do whatever you need to do. It's extremely flexible, extremely powerful, and uh, lots of large companies are using this. Thanks for sticking around to the end and watching the entire video. Remember, you can find a complete transcript of this video at DIYPBX.com along with our complete catalog of DIY PBX setup videos. Thanks again for watching and good luck.